Now, Paul, we, we often focus on the colonization exploring aspect of sending humans into space. Now, let's assume we don't need to evacuate Earth and we're just trying to explore and expand. Uh, can we use robots or other things? Yes, yeah, so one possibility is rather than change Mars or build artificial planets, we change ourselves in some way. One possibility we genetically engineer ourselves so we need less air or water or something like that. Um, but another possibility is just send robots out. Yeah. Now we know that robots are extremely capable space explorers. Very. As we can see with examples like these. Um, and robots don't need water, they don't need air, they tolerate much wider temperature ranges than humans do. You, they don't complain if you push them a little fast, they don't get sick. They get... If, if occasionally they die, then we just build another one and uh, no one's going to sue you for manslaughter or murder. So, so it's kind of, you know, instead of trying to figure out how a human can survive, just say, well, let's just build something that works anyways. Yes. So, I mean, one could easily imagine asteroid mining being an entirely robotic thing already. Some of the mines on Earth yep. are very robotic. Um, but if we actually wanted to settle space, to give our civilization somewhere to escape and keep safe havens, then that's not going to do it. That's right. But that's with current robots. Robot technology and artificial intelligence is improving very quickly. Yeah. So there are a few other possibilities. One possibility is that probably in the next, certainly in the next few decades, we'll be able to make um, computers that can outperform the human brain. Yep. And it might indeed be possible to scan your brain or my brain or anyone's brain and reproduce that in software as a simulation. So they presumably would think they are you, they have all your memories and all your personality traits and so on, but they'd be running in silicon rather than in uh, neurons. Yep. And maybe we send them into space. It's kind of like us, but we don't have to worry about the human body effects and we can go pretty much anywhere we want. Yeah. and. Uh, this would be much easier in terms of not needing all the water and oxygen and so on. And presumably we could do enough edits so we actually like rocks yeah. as opposed to greenery. We, <laughs> we find a nice rocky desert to be pleasant and satisfying and so on. And so it could be that what we're talking about in space is not humans going yeah. out there, but electronic replicas of human brains embodied in robots are actually far better suited. Yeah. And does that count as colonization of space? I don't know. And like I said, I the think robots are presumably thinking of it as that. Because if it's an exact clone of you or me, it, it will think it's me out there, but it won't be me. But I think the question is, does it matter, right? I guess it's, you know, what do you want to have out of it? Is it important to say there is a human with these cells living there or humanity is going? And life has changed in the four billion years, as we've talked about recently. Yeah. Is this the next change? And it may be that we don't even bother replicating ourselves. I mean, if we have computers that are more intelligent than we are, which is coming pretty fast, yeah. maybe they're our descendants. We think of our descendants as being our children or our grandchildren or our great-grandchildren, but maybe the true descendants of humanity are the artificial intelligences we build. And they can go on and colonize space. Space is a great environment for them, better than Earth in many respects. Very. The unlimited energy and limited raw materials. So maybe we just leave the Earth as a ghetto for the humans. A reserve, whether you're like old people's home where the ancient race of wet meat things live and are far more intelligent and capable descendants. Uh, in that case, you, if the meteorite hits Earth, humanity might be wiped out, but maybe the, the legacy human, of humanity lives human on. civilization doesn't. Yeah. So it's interesting whether this appeals to you or horrifies you? I mean, what, what, what else is actually new? Yeah, I mean, this is the thing, and is I always go back to why do we want to colonize space? Obviously, if you need, if you want humanity to survive or move away from a terrible place, maybe not. But if it's all about just knowing and expanding and exploring, I'm not as horrified as I think most people may be. I, I'm very open to the idea. And in fact, I think it's a, could be almost a little bit more responsible. We know of the health effects and the issues and the problems and all of the loopholes. Is it more responsible to go and change Mars to suit our needs or say, Mars is fine the way it is, let's change us to fit into the way Mars works? Yeah, so it's interesting. I mean, colonizing space, I mean, even if you want to do it, which is unclear, if it's a good idea, which is unclear, it's not going to be easy. Nope. Small colonies self-sustaining on either the Moon or Mars, we can do it. Yeah. Would it be appealing enough to lead to mass immigration? Well, only if things are pretty bad on Earth, That's I think. Right. Um, and may, asteroid belt, we could certainly build, if you wanted a population of 100 billion or 1,000 billion people, we can lead good there. lives. Asteroid place is the place to build it. 
Uh, well, Mars, after all, is not that big, so yeah. we get at most double the Earth's population on Mars. Uh, so, but maybe it's, it's a role for robots or maybe clones of our intelligence.